Hello everyone, I'm Big Fellow, and welcome to the new series. I did tease you this series in channel updates and the last Angmar campaign video. So here we are. This is the top unit series. It can either be top 10 or top 5. So as this is the first episode, I'll give you a bit of an introduction. So in this series, I'm gonna give you my... Well, not my, it's actually official, it's not my opinion. I test them. So it's not my, it's not personal. So I give you the top 10 of whatever class I'm doing. For example, today we are doing the top 10 cavalry units, but next time it could be top 10 archers, top 10 spearmen, swordsmen, halberdiers, axemen, and that's the general stuff. I could also do top 10 militia, because you might want to know what's the best militia in the game. So top 10 militia, I could do the top five trolls, I've actually already done that list, I might post that next next time. And when I speak trolls, it's not like the trolling as in, I just trolled you, it's the trolls as in the creatures. Could also do top 5 or top 10 generals bodyguard, because in the cavalry I did not include them. Okay, so that's the introduction, you just get it picked up once we, you know, see the video. Okay, so... I'm gonna explain to you how do I um, how do I make this list. So I take the top five um, cavalry in this case of each faction. Then I make them fight each other, not just once. I make them fight two ice or three times. Sometimes depends. So I make them fight each other, and then I make my ten, my ten first to fight each other. They become my ten list. Then I fight my other remaining troops with number 10, and then if they win, then number 10 gets disqualified, and then they fight number 9. If they win, then number 9 becomes number 10. So, complicated process. Basically, a lot of work. And then after that, um, I give you the list. So, yeah, okay. So this is the first episode. It might be a bit dodgy because I've never done anything like this before. Plus, I am doing too much editing, all right? The editing in this video will be enormous. So, before I start um, explaining the top 10 list, um, I do hope you like this series. Please leave a massive like to show me your support because like I said, it's a lot of work. I spend a lot of time, well, I actually spent four days doing this thing, plus the editing and recording. Um, so yeah, hopefully this comes out on Tuesday, if not on Wednesday, it must be on Tuesday then. Okay, so here's the list. Enjoy! So, at number 10, we have the Riddermark Heavy Cavalry. This unit comes from the Kingdom of Rohan, and it's a unit after the Barracks of End. This unit has 62 soldiers, and they have an 8 attack, a 6 charge bonus, and a 21 total defense. As all units, they have special abilities, and they are skilled against mounts, which means they are effective against other cavalry. They are effective against armor, thanks to their big axes. They have excellent stamina, and they have a good morale, and a good morale response. This unit doesn't have a secondary weapon, which means they always use the same weapon, which is an 8 attack. So this is a prolonged melee unit, as it only has one weapon, and its attack is higher than its charge. At number 9, we have... Bogues Champions. Now, this unit comes from the Misty Mountains, and it's the only Orc Cavalry that we have in this list. Unfortunately, Warx didn't make it. So this unit has 64 soldiers, it has an attack of 14, and a charge of 15. Its total defense is 18, and it costs 1,200 florins. Now, its, its abilities are, it scares horses, it has excellent stamina, a very powerful charge, and the morale is very good. This unit is um, for striking infantry and cavalry, as its main weapon is a spear, and it doesn't have a secondary weapon. So the only weapon that it will have is the spear. So against cavalry is very good, that's why it made it to the number 9 on this list. At number 8, we have the Tirith Ayer Knights. This unit comes from the Principality of Dol Amroth, and it's one of the units after the Barracks event. This unit has 51 soldiers, it has an attack of 8, it has a charge of 12, and a defense of 28, and it costs 1,500 florins. The abilities of this unit is, are, pardon me, 
it, they are skilled against mounts, which means against other cavalry. They have a powerful charge and they have excellent stamina. They have a very good morale and they don't have a secondary weapon, so they'll always use their main weapon, which is a spear, which is the only weapon and which makes them good against cavalry. At number 7, we have the Lok Inas Rim. This unit comes from Rune and it has 62 soldiers, it has an attack of 9 and a charge of 13, with a total defense of 24 and a cost of 1400 florins. These are also known as the Cataphracts of Rune, and they inspire nearby troops. They're very good in deserts, as they come from Rune. They have a powerful charge and excellent stamina, and they have very good morale. They also have a secondary weapon, so their first weapon, which is a spear, has an attack of 9, which is said. Their secondary weapon, which is a sword, has an attack of 11, and this is also a strike and prolonged melee um, cavalry. So, at number 6, we have the White Knights. This unit comes from the Principality of Dolamrov. This unit has 62 soldiers, an attack of 12, and a charge of 5. Now, from this, you can obviously know that this is not a strike cavalry. This is a prolonged cavalry. It has a total defense of 12, and it costs 1,275 florins. This, the abilities of this unit are, it's skilled against mounts, so even though it doesn't have a spear, it's still skilled against mounts. Frightens nearby in enemy infantry, it has ex excellent stamina and has good morale. And like I said, it doesn't have a secondary weapon and it's a prolonged melee cavalry unit. At number 5, we have the Royal Guard. This unit comes from the Kingdom of Rohan and has 51 soldiers. It has an attack of 9, a charge of 13, and a total defense of 28. It costs 1,498 florins. A very odd number there, I don't know why the 98 is there. <laughs> its abilities are, it inspires nearby troops, it's skilled against other mounts, it has a powerful charge and excellent stamina. This unit also has a secondary attack, Obviously, the first attack is a spear, which is the 9, which I already told you, and the secondary attack is a sword, which is 11 damage. This can be either a strike or prolonged melee unit. At number 4, we have the Eldarwin Lancers. I do apologize if I said the name wrong. So this unit comes from the realm of Imlages or from Linden. They're both, um, their units are different, but they have the both exact same stats. So... We have 42 soldiers in this unit, it has a 12 attack, a charge of 15, and a total defense of 30. You can see this is very elite. It costs 1,800 florins. Its um, abilities are, it's adept at hiding in woods, which, I mean, which is normal for elves. It's skilled against other mounts, it has a powerful charge, and has excellent stamina. And its morale is locked, which means they will never break, they will never run away. And it does have a secondary weapon. The first weapon is a spear, 12 attack, I already said that. Secondary weapon is 15, which is a sword. At number 3, we have the Arthurdine Royal Guard. This unit comes from the Northern Dunedain, and it's an elite cavalry. We have 53 soldiers, an attack of 9, a charge of 14, and a defense of 13. So the special abilities of this unit are Inspires nearby troops It's skilled against other mounts It frightens nearby enemy infantry And has powerful charges um, This unit also has a secondary weapon And like I say with everything The first weapon that I say is a spear Attack of 9 which I already said And the secondary weapon is a sword with an attack of 12 This unit can be used strike or prolonged melee at number 2, we have the Brotherhood of the Lands. This unit comes from the Lands of Kand, and there are 62 soldiers in that um, unit. It has an attack of 10, a charge of 12, and a total defense of 24, and has a cost of 1,400 florins. The abilities of this unit are, it's skilled against mounts, which means against other cavalry, it's good in deserts, it has an advantage in deserts because they're from Kant, 
it's obvious. They frighten nearby infantry and with a powerful charge and they have excellent stamina. They have a very good morale, they're not locked, they have a very good morale. And they do not have a secondary weapon, their only weapon is the spear which is 10 attack which I said before. So this is a strike cavalry unit unless you fight against other cavalry which is a prolonged beta. So at number one, you guys probably guessed it, we have the Knights of the Silver Swan. This unit comes from the Principality of Dolamroth, and they have 51 soldiers, an attack of 9, which may seem very low for the top unit, but has a charge of 14 and a defense of 33. Very high. Though it's very expensive, it's a cost of 1728 florins. Its abilities are inspires nearby troops, it's skilled against mounts, Frightens nearby infantry, nearby enemy infantry, excuse me. It has a very powerful charge, as we can see, and excellent stamina. It does have a secondary weapon. Okay, so the spear is 9, but the secondary weapon is a sword with 12 attack damage. And the morale is locked. So the Knight of the Silver Swan, they are the top unit, and you can see why. They can be a strike, prolonged, or anything you want. So there you have it, our top 10 list. Please let me know if you agree with me in this list. I mean, you might say, oh, this unit was not supposed to be here, it's pathetic, or something like that. And um, please note one important thing. Um, I'm recording this after I already did the list, and I made a huge mistake. It's not life-threatening, okay, guys? Um, on the unit numbers, when I say like 62 soldiers or 42 soldiers, I'm wrong. Because I've been testing them as the general unit. I'm not, not the, like general, I mean with the actual captain I'm speaking. So then it adds one extra unit, so I didn't realize this. So everything that I said, you just minus one, and then that's the actual number if you don't have a captain in it. So for example, um. The Riddermark Heavy Axemen, I said there are two, 62 soldiers. In reality, there's only 61. There's 62 because it was the captain's unit. So I do apologize. So yeah, thank you for watching this video, guys. Um, next video will probably be an Angmar campaign or probably Dale. I'm working on Dale as well. Um, this is not very regular. Eh? Like I said, there's a lot of work. And... Uh, Maybe twice a month or something like that. Um, it's a lot of work. So please leave a big like to show me your support. And um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.